Hey everyone, welcome back to Possible Audio. In this video, we're going to start replacing parts on the Marantz 1060. We're going to begin with the P800 power board. So everybody has their own method to tackling a project like this. Some like to start with replacing the main power cans. Some like to tackle the output amplifier board. Some it may be the phono board. I'm gonna start with the P800 board. So that's where I'm gonna begin with this one. So there's only four power cans we gotta replace. There's two diodes down there and one transistor. And then we're gonna check the uh, there's four resistors, and we're going to check those. You can see that the P800 board, which is located right there, super easy to get to. We might have to move some wires out of the way, but we're not going to have to remove the board, I don't think. Let me show you. I took a zip tie, and I just simply zip tied the wires out of the way because we got to get to this solder pad right there and that one there, and these were laying across it. So just zip tie them up out of the way, and they'll be fine. Right, I think it's this one here. I got the service manual pulled up on my computer screen and that kind of helped me get an orientation of these parts on the bottom side of the board. Come on now. There we go. Sometimes I wonder if my iron's hot enough, but you know what it is. Just got to give it a minute to heat up. Solder on the pad. There we go. So you just get your iron on here. And. Come on now. Heat it up. Come on. That's it. Well, that doesn't smell right. Why does that smell like burning rubber? Did I get down into a wire? No, I don't see anything like that. You people at home are probably going, man, that guy's slow. He takes five years to desolder one part. There we go. You know, I'd rather go slow and get it right than to go fast and burn up a bunch of stuff. Come on, let's do it. It can still be a little frustrating. They really, see, there we go. Now I got that one coming up. Some of these can really be, they were overachievers at the factory. Let's just put it like that. Some of those guys were like, I soldered that in and nobody's going to take it out ever. Anyway, so you just have to you just have to come over here and start working on straightening these pins. Some people like to use a little flat blade screwdriver to get underneath, and that's probably what I might move to because this is not working so well for me. Got that one there. I had to get the solder wick under that one a little better. There. Come on. There. Got that one up. So you just have to kind of sit here and work at it. All right. Let me work on this. We run right all of our soldering joints desoldered. And um, I'm going to flip the integrated amp back over and start pulling parts out okay let's just start pulling some power cans now these are okay well we see that came right out these are glued in so that's why it made that snap and we're going to clean all the glue off the board and uh, get rid of that so that's it we're just pulling them off at this point and see, doing a good desolder job and straightening the leads, that makes it a lot easier than, uh, well, these are glued on good. 
Wow. I'm gonna have to get some pliers after them. There we go. There's that one. See that? So it's it's worth it to take the extra time to do a good job desoldering. It's less likely you'll damage the board. There we go. There's that one. And our transistor. See, I might have missed a lead on this. It is possible. Come on. Nope, I didn't. There's that. So this feller used a little bit of clean strip with a K, acetone, and I just took a rag and a flat blade screwdriver, and I just wrapped it around and just kind of wrapped the rag around the end of the screwdriver just to kind of soften the glue up. And then I would remove the rag and scrape at it a little bit and just kind of went back and forth. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. It took 10 minutes. All right, I'm gonna take my multimeter and I'm gonna get in here and check these resistors right quick and uh, compare it with the values in the service manual. And um, I'm, I'm betting these will be okay, but if one's bad, we will take care of that. All right, so I tested our resistors and I came up with this list and basically R803 and R804 in the service manual are listed wrong. Um, they should be, um, R803 should be a 27K and R804 should be a 100. The way I know the service manual is wrong is because <clears throat> the resistors have, um, there's a color code for the bands. See the resistors? Like you see down on the board, there's colored bands on, on, on each resistor. And that's a code to tell you what the resistance is of that resistor. So if the manual says one thing and the resistor is color coded for something else and you test it and what it tests as matches the color code, then, you know, it's, it's good and the manual is wrong. So that's so, how I, Everything looks okay. They tested good. And at this point, I'm going to start uh, populating the board. With... Right here, I just soldered in the two diodes. And they actually connect to those two round ceramic capacitors. But you need a space right here. See, here's the leg on the bottom. You need a space right here. You don't want that connecting, but you want them to overlap with this direction. So you're bending them to overlap both ways right there. See over here, you want this one to overlap inward. And we're just going to create a solder bridge going all across these parts right here. This all right. right. See how I got that connected all together? So you got to have a little space on those two. You want a little space where they're not connecting. And up here on this one, you're just creating a solid connection all the way across those, uh, all the way across those leads. Don't forget, there's a positive and a negative, okay? Don't get these backwards. All right. Now they're not soldered in, but let me show you. I have them, I have the leads bent and trimmed like they need to be. And uh, now I'm just going to lay this over and solder them all in. And all right, here's our solder work. Power switch is on. Cans are installed with our two diodes and transistor. And is what I've done is I've plugged this uh, into the dim bulb tester is what we're looking for is this bulb to flash bright and then go completely dim or maybe even 100% out. And that's what we want. If it goes bright and stays bright, that means we got a short. And that means shut it down and figure out what I did wrong. Um, so let's test it and see what we get. 
try to hold this so you can see. Come on now. There. All right, we got power. Got our power light on. This is good. We got no light and that's what we want. This that looks great. I'm gonna let this sit here for about 15 minutes and come back and check it. And I almost forgot, these cans tested, um, the large can was 17% out of tolerance and the ESR was still good on it. So it was passable, but kind of getting towards the end of its life. The medium size can, it was done. It was over by 22% or so. And the two smaller cans, they were out of tolerance by over 30%. So, as these cans wear out, they start acting like resistors in the system. Right, all right. It's been 20 minutes. Dim bulb is still out. There's uh, no smoke, no anything at all. Let's check our temperatures. Let's see what we got here. 77 on the large power can, 70 on the medium size, 68 on the two smaller ones. The diodes are at 71-ish. Yep, 71. I mean, everything is, resistors are cool. I mean, everything on this board is testing out great. So I think we got success. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see y'all in another video.